Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and in this screencast we're going to be playing with Swift and JSON. That is, we're going to be taking a JSON file and reading it into Swift and taking those resulting objects to populate our data model. Now, before we dive into this, I want to give a big shout out to Luke Parham. Luke actually updated the tutorial that this screencast is based off of. Thanks, Luke. Okay, let's start playing with JSON. As you can see, this JSON is a pretty hefty file. I'm interested in the entry array. It contains a series of objects that correspond to each app in the App Store. For the sake of this demo, we'll only concern ourselves with the app name, the app link, and the ID of the app. In the sources directory, you'll notice that there is a data manager class. This just handles the business of getting the JSON from the bundle. Okay, let's get the JSON now and do a little parsing. First, I open top app starter and get the JSON from the bundle. We're passing in a closure into the method, and this is where we will parse our JSON. The closure passes in a data object. We need to convert that data object to JSON. We do this in the guard statement, and using the JSON serialization object, we call JSON object passing in the data. If a nil value is returned, then we stop the playground. When working with JSON, we only have a few types available to us. For collections, we have arrays and dictionaries. Dictionaries are used to actually represent objects via key value pairs. Now the data for those objects are of three different types. They can be a string, they can be a number, or they can be null. Now the thing is, when working with JSON, when you get back an object, it's going to be of type any. So needless to say, there's a lot of casting to be done. Now that we have our JSON, we need to create an object from it. The first thing I'll do is create a new Swift file in the sources folder. I'll call this app. I'll use a struct to contain all the data. Next, I'll create a few properties to hold the name and link of the app. These will all be strings. We'll create two initializers. The first one just takes the name and the link as strings passed into it. This will be for cases where we are manually setting the values. Now we create the initializer to parse the JSON itself. Since we may not be able to create an object from the JSON as it may be incomplete, we make the initializer a failable one. The initializer takes a dictionary for our key value pairs. Now I extract the various data into variables. If at any point the casting fails, then the initializer will fail. The ID dictionary contains a dictionary for the app link data. So I must get the ID dictionary from the JSON dictionary, then search the ID dictionary for the actual value. Once I have the values, I assign them to the properties, and what do you know? We have our data object ready to go. I return back to the playground file. I want to get the first app returned in the feed. In the guard statement, I first get the feed dictionary. From the dictionary, I get the entry data, which contains an array of dictionaries. Finally, I get the first app returned from the list. Now that we have the first app, we simply create an object from it and print out the result. Look at that, objects from JSON, magic. As you can see, creating objects from JSON is actually relatively easy to do. Unfortunately, if there are any errors during initialization, we're actually in the dark. This can be resolved with some homegrown error handling. Back in our playground, I open app.swift in our sources folder and add a new enumeration. If the JSON is missing a field, we will pass back that field name in the actual error object. Now we update our initializer to indicate that it throws an error. Next, we update our guard statements to throw errors as well. If we can't find the field, we pass back the field name as a string. Back in our playground file, we incorporate our object creation in a do-catch block. As you can see, it works like before, but if I pass in an empty dictionary, we get an informative error back letting us know the error cause. JSON is an excellent machine independent file format that we can share amongst our devices. It makes a great way to share data. Unfortunately, it does have that pain point where we have to take the resultant parsed objects from Swift and convert it into our data model. In a future screencast, I'll show you how we can alleviate that pain point through a third-party library called Gloss. 
In the meantime, I suggest you just take it one step at a time and focus on that casting because if you get all jumbled up, you may soon find yourself miscast as a calm developer and you'll end up with a broken monitor and, well, your hand in a cast. Ciao.